Bully 2 is one big conundrum. It's one of those things that feels so probable yet simultaneously out of reach. This video will be a speculation. This is not a video that will change your outlook on anything whatsoever. So you should just leave. I aim to make this feel like more of a gathering, a heart to heart conversation between you and me as we continue to eagerly wait to see if there is anything around the corner. Please enjoy. Currently, the biggest headline to come from the rumors is that in 2017, Bully 2 was cancelled. So I guess that puts this whole video into jeopardy, so uh... This was despite all the supposed leaks that had been slithering around the internet. Also, Sean Lee, the composer for the original Bully, signalled in an interview in 2009 that he would be working on another Bully game. Only in 2015 when some community members reached out to Sean on Facebook to ask him about these claims, and Sean responded by saying something along the lines of well, not, not exactly that, but basically saying that it was a misquote. The man obviously came out of his NDA and was probably on the blacklist. Now, there have been a few hints by developers and insiders throughout the last 10 years, but nothing concrete to go by. Just some leaked screenshots that could have been made by anybody. Maybe I made them. That's all that's come to light about the possibility of a sequel. So now I want to dip my toe into some of the most popular conversations surrounding Bully 2, if it was to happen. The first one is pretty simple. The what, where, when, who, why. Looking back at previous installments, given how Red Dead 2's story was handled, most likely it would feature a new protagonist and main cast of characters with some familiar faces integrated into the storyline. It would probably make for a good mix of new and old blood for both sets of fans to be satisfied with. The when question is another one. The original was ultimately a love letter to anyone who attended high school in the US from around the mid 90s all the way up to 2006 when it released. Now many have suggested that Bully 2 will likely be set in present time, whenever that is. What should be noted if that was the case, a lot of the shenanigans and charm that was captured in the original will be absent in the sequel because high school banter has evolved. Who am I kidding? It's downgraded. In fact, I'd probably go a little bit further on this point. If it was set in present times, Rockstar might lean towards a darker side to high school, which unfortunately is starting to become very commonplace, at least from my end. Having read some stories and knowing people personally who have got kids that are currently in the pipeline, it's gotten bad. And if that surprises you, I urge you to pay closer attention. Man, that got dark real quick, didn't it? Let's, uh, let's take a quick meme break and we'll be right back. I shoved a toothbrush in my butt. And my dad burst in and he goes, What the fuck are you doing? He's gone over that cliff. <laughs> now that's a suggestion that many fans might think tarnishes one of Bully's most treasured aspects. And that was just the healthy innocence about it. It revolved around typical high school drama, spreading rumours about each other, hilarious social commentary about the different subcultures in the schools. Not that much profanity, I mean you had words like bitch, whore, slut, you know, ones that turned me on for the most part. But no, none of the above. And just as a side note, I don't condemn swearing. I think it has a certain character to it that makes us all feel very authentic. But in this case, you have to applaud someone when they go against the establishment. All I'm saying though is that there's different possibilities in storytelling and characteristics for Bully 2 depending on the time era that gets chosen. What makes you the number 30, bruh? West Side Story, bruh? What, bro? Sweetie Todd, bruh? What, bro? What, bro? Now, as you can see, I have gone back to play the original Bully for this video, and given it's a 15-year-old game, it has aged about as well as most YouTube groups. Combat is not very responsive, you're constantly flinging your arms in thin air as you desperately try to maintain a combo. Be careful jogging and adjusting your camera at the same time, because if you get too cocky, it will bite. But with that said, I really enjoyed the game. 
and I have to confess, while playing it, I could see the potential of what could be done with this format in a sequel. From Rockstar's perspective, combat may be the most challenging aspect of the gameplay to nail down. It needs to have a perfect marriage of variety, depth, while also staying in line with the game's tone, so no free-flowing twirling like Batman Arkham games or slicing and dicing like you can in Ghost of Tsushima. You're a high school student, and I can imagine crafting a responsive and satisfying combat system that is restrictive to many glorious outcomes will be somewhat of a challenge. I would almost guarantee that the developers sat down and thought, okay, to help broaden the scope and imagination for the prototyping stages of combat, we need some material references here. So, we're going to go to YouTube, and we're going to search up high school fights and see what they come up with. And boy, would they have been hanging their heads in shame. My word. You call that fighting? I don't see how I can make this fun for players. Alright, you know what? Let's go to street fights. Maybe the adults can give us a few hints on things. Really? Really? The one thing I would like to see an emphasis on is more variety and choices to tackle mission objectives, whether that would be stealth, fist blazing, I guess would be the term, bringing along a companion to help, you know, all those kind of things, etc. I know some people did criticise Red Dead 2 for its linear design around the main story missions that 95% of the time did not allow players to diverge for even an inch from the specific instructions that were given to them. Dan Hauser stated many times over the years that Rockstar always sets out to achieve a new kind of challenge with each new game, and I think giving players the freedom to cause their own chaos in a variety of different ways across the entire game would be pretty tits. But only time will tell whether the company will retain that pledge with their first game after his departure. Or a fallout, really, it was a fallout. <laughs> Everything else though, like the exploration, the activities, just need to be bigger and deeper. How are things? Like, come oh, on, at least try to fight back. Have you <laughs> so pathetic. And then that really does it. I won't lie, I have a bit of an ego against speculation videos, so logically as you can see I've made one myself. Mainly because in short, you are performing the risk of setting yourself up for disappointment. Having passionate ideas is great, but some may pursue these opinions as if they are certainties without consequences. It's just a lot like when you ask someone what's their ideal partner, and it's like, you think you know what you want, but do you? Do you really? And if you do, Good fucking luck. But I've made an exception for this one, because we don't know if this thing has even completed its first line of code. Or maybe tomorrow, Rockstar will be changing their background colour to blue. Conclusion though? We all really would like to see this game made. And even if it doesn't, it's a great testimonial reminder of how aspiring and credible the original bully was. GTA 6 apparently isn't coming out until 2025. Will there be something before then? I hope. Just before you guys go though, I have a very exciting announcement to make. Patreon! Yeah, I don't have one. So, <laughs> see ya!